Thomas and welcome to New Life Church International by way of New Life TV. So we're here in the house and we're online. So we're asking everybody to come on in and get seated as we start today. But most of all, we want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us here today as we get started with our encounter today. You don't want to miss this encounter today. This is a Dream Builders Sunday. I have a special guest lined up for you. And we have wonderful worship getting ready to flow in just a minute here. But let's go to our announcements right now, and then we'll come back with another word. Each Sunday morning is an encounter here at New Life Church International. In an effort to make the Word of God practical and applicable to everyday living, Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas have implemented Sunday morning encounters. Dream Builders encounters are opportunities that share real life stories, which builds faith to dream bigger. This experience includes a mix of video presentation, testimonies, and interviews with those who have stepped out on their dreams, turning them into realities. Merging the teaching of the word with the process of manifesting one's dreams. Be sure to be in attendance. Our next Dream Builders Encounters is coming up soon. This year is the year of phenomenal progression. We believe that God is positioning us to do amazing things in our community and in our world. It is important that we receive revelation from the Holy Spirit as we chart our way forward. This year we are setting ourselves to seek the Lord so that we may know what he requires of us. Over the next several months, we will host seven prayer and fasting events here at New Life Church International. The first of which will be from April 10th at 12 p.m. to April 17th at 12 p.m. You may visit our website for the details and focus on this first prayer and fasting event. When we come together this way, supernatural things can happen. Arise from depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. This Easter Sunday, you will be reminded how important it is to arise and shine in the midst of challenging times and hard circumstances. You were born to win, and with God, you cannot fail. Join us Easter Sunday at 9.30 a.m. as we observe communion and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're excited to introduce three new ways you can give to our church. The first is text giving. You can give now, at home, or whenever you want simply by texting the word GIVE to our church's giving number. Once you receive your text reply, follow the prompts in your one-time registration to complete your gift. The second way is online giving. You can do this by going to our church's giving page and following the prompts to give. Log in by using your mobile phone number and secure PIN or your email and password. Once you've accessed your giving account, you can give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift scheduled to go out on the date you choose. If you'd like to give to a specific area of our ministry, make sure to designate your gift using the Fund drop-down menu. The third way is giving through our app. Simply open our app and access the Give tab to complete your gift. If you don't have our app downloaded yet, just head over to the App Store and type in Church by Ministry One. Download the app and then search our church's name. If you have any questions about any of these ways to give to our church, feel free to ask one of our staff members for assistance. Thank you for your continued generosity to our church. Scripture in the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 21. This scripture, there's a scripture that God gave to me years and years ago because I struggled sometimes with knowing when God was talking to me or when it was just my idea that I was having. Mm. 
Uh, and if I went out on a path, am I following God or am I following myself? Mm. And then God led me to Isaiah 30 and 21. Maybe they'll have time to put it on the screen for you. Isaiah 30, 21. It says, your ears will hear a word behind you. And that word will say, this is the way. Walk in it. And when you turn to the right hand, when you turn to the left hand, the implication here is that word will be consistent. In other words, you won't be distracted to what's to the right. Wow. You won't be distracted by what's to the left. That voice, it says in the King James, behind you, but it's within you, guiding you and directing you. How has that word played out in your life? That is a powerful word. Um, I believe that the enemy has the ability to open doors. So when that word is spoken to you, that word is guiding you to the door that God is opening for you. And what will happen in life is life will make you turn to the left and to the right. And it will be the doors that the enemy has opened. But if you remember, the scripture says that God opens doors that no man can shut. And then when he shuts the door, no man has the power to open it. So the enemy doesn't have the power to close the door. So when you turn left, it may be a door that you want to open, but God will then shut that door because he wants you to walk out that word. Oh, man. Mm. That is so true. And I, I believe that with all my heart because I've experienced that same thing in my life where, you know, I'm thinking this is, this is an opportunity that God has for me, and then all of a sudden the door closes, and, and it's not an opportunity from God at all. But thank God he closes the door. Thank God he closes thank the God door. Thank God he closes the door to, to help us and to aid us. But I believe that help comes to us as we yield to him and as we surrender to his guidance in our life. Mm. I believe that. So Shantez is married. Tell us about your family, your wife and your family. And so, we have some pictures that they're going to put up for you to see. I've been married for over seven years now. Um, we have four children. I have three straight girls at first. So I have a six, four, and two. And then I have a one-month uh, baby boy, so God sent the boy. <laughs> so we are, uh, we're very excited. So uh, we, we're looking at him right now with his cowboy hat on. So... That's, that's evidence that you live in Texas, amen. It's a Texas boy. <laughs> and, uh, and so did, did we see the picture of the family? Okay, all right. That's beautiful. Um, tell us about your dream uh, because right now I want you to brag a little bit about what you're doing in Texas in terms of your business and how that's, how that's coming. So um, God started me off in Louisville, Kentucky. So I moved uh, from California to Louisville when I was about 21 years old, about a decade ago. God sent me to Louisville with nothing. You hear uh, Dr. Bill Winston say with $200. I think we had like about five, I had about $500. Um, so I kissed my parents. I said, God is sending me to Louisville to go out and train. And at that time, I was thinking it was for ministry. So I was going to go out and uh, help the church and, and build churches. And I did for a period of time. But I didn't know that God was sending me to train also not just ministry, but also for business. So in 2014, I had said, okay, Lord, I want to get ready to have a family. What I'm doing right now, I'm not going to be financially positioned to uh, have a family or get married. Um, so I went to an actual temp agency, and uh, they interviewed me, and I took some tests, and I had scored the highest test they've ever seen. Mm -hmm. So that while they were trying to hire me on through their temp agency, to be one of their um, agents there, I had interviewed through a security company. And the funny thing about security companies is everybody will tell you when you get in the security industry, nobody ever plans to get into the industry. It just kind of comes on you. And so I interviewed the person, and I remember calling my grandmother, and I said, uh, I called her Ma when she was alive. I said, Ma, uh, I'm, I just interviewed, and uh, God told me I'm going to end up being the general manager for this guy. And my grandmother's like, you don't even have, you're not even working for them yet. What are you talking about? <laughs> and um, it ended up being that that was a big training ground that God was going to have me start on. And so I began to train and learn the industry. And I went from being an attempt to an install manager. And then I learned all the bits of installing. And when I say installs, it's cameras, access control, 
fire systems, intrusion systems, uh, all commercial, like 90, probably 95% commercial. And so from there, I learned every aspect of the business because it's funny, it's funny, you said something yesterday, but God has always told me to work as if some, someday somebody else is going to work the same way for me. So when I worked in ministry, I'd work 60, 80 hours a week. We'd go and travel, and we'd literally, with the toothbrush, laying floor, we did all the work that they don't see behind the scenes. Yeah. So then when I realized I was going to be getting paid to work, I was like, I did this for free then. I'm getting paid now. So I took that same work ethic, 60, 80 hours a week, because the Lord had told me to master my craft. And you're going to do it because one day they're going to work for you the same way. And so I worked for years. And we built this business. It ended up being one of the top 100 security dealerships in the nation. Um, and when I was there, it had been stagnant for 20 years. So in the last eight years, we did more than what they did in the first 20 years. Wow. Really, in the, last, in the last previous two years before I had left, that reoccurring revenue, which is what we're based off, we did more in those two years than they had did all the years combined in organic growth. Wow. That's awesome. Come on. And so God began to deal with me, and um, it's funny because that word always comes to you first, and God had me thinking about ownership the entire time. And I often believe when you work or if you work for someone, you don't work for a job, you don't work for a paycheck. And I used to tell him, he, he used to always ask me, uh, he used to say, why are, why are you working for me? Why do you like doing this? He's like, Sean, there's not much I can train you on. And I said, I like who I'm becoming, because I always worked for what I would become in that position I would do. And so um, I ended up uh, praying, and God said, you're going to go to, we end up praying, and God began to deal with me with ownership. And so in the beginning, I thought that meant I was going to partner with him. And so I was like, okay, we're going to partner together. We're going to do this together. I'm going to be in Louisville, Kentucky uh, for a long time. And my wife was like, no, we're not going to be here. Remember, God said, you're just here for training. And so I... Um, begin to let God deal with me, and then we begin to think, okay, Lord, where would we live at? And we always thought about Texas, but we knew we didn't deposit Texas there. So I was like, okay, we did some market research and looked, and uh, we saw San Antonio. So a year before, I felt like I was Joshua going in to spy out the <laughs> land. God sent me to San Antonio to look at the land. And as I began to walk, he began to remind me of the scriptures where your feet will tread upon, that will I give to you. And so I said, okay, Lord, we're going to see this is a huge city. It's the seventh largest city in America. And so I began to go a year before, and God began to tell me he wants me to plan to go to San Antonio and get ready to prepare myself. Wow. And so I began to prepare uh, back in January of 2021. God, God says, it's time now. And I'm like, it's time. I'm not prepared. He said, I want you to put your house up to sale. And I'm like, uh, okay, Lord, we'll put our house up for sale. So I'm thinking it's going to be a process to sell my house. The house sold in a day. Wow. So, and this is before it became popular with real estate for it to sell in a day. It sold in a day. And so I'm looking at my wife, and she's like, well, where are we going to live? We, we haven't looked for a house yet. I haven't started. And I'm like, well, God hasn't told me to look yet. Because whenever I do something, I always saturate myself with the Word of God before I do anything. Um, and so I begin to ask the Lord, okay, well, what's next? Do I tell my boss that I'm getting ready to leave? He's like, no, you don't say any of that yet. Don't do any of that yet. He said, I want you to go to San Antonio. And so we went to San Antonio. I flew out there for a weekend, and I began to look at other houses that were there. And so it was a short amount of time, and my, my wife, she wanted at least five acres. Or four, she wanted a couple acres. Um, and so we began to look. Wasn't really any houses there. And uh, I had received a word that said my house that we would look for, it would be in the tuck. And so we got a house that, that I thought we wanted. It, was, it had a couple acres on it. It was just built. I said, okay, Lord, this is what we want. Because in the beginning, I was thinking, you know, I'm going to get me a small house that I can grow in, that I can put all my money in the business. And the Lord's like, I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to think big. And I'm like, big? Lord, who's paying for this? <laughs> and uh, he said, no, when, because when you have a word, he'll give you the provision for the word. And so we found the house that I thought was it. And you ever thought, like, okay, I wanted something. And then we went in, we put in an offer, and the house had been sitting on the market at that time for about 180 days. 
So we're thinking everything's finalized, we're done, I'm flying back out. And it turned out the guy, he did not want to sell to me. And I'm not one to use race or anything uh, when it comes to doing stuff. But I think he saw, because I go by Sean typically, I think he saw Sean Tails was getting ready to buy uh, the older gentleman's dream house that he had built. And uh, he didn't want to sell to me at all. And so I was like, oh, Lord, I can't fly back out. I don't have the time or the place to do it. But God had a house for me in the tuck. It was literally in the same neighborhood, right around the corner, with more land, with more acreage, with a bigger house, with the barn that we wanted for the horses that we're going to have, that he had designed in the tuck. And so I went, uh, we were in the process, we're buying the house now, and I'm like, okay, I got to get ready to tell my team that I had built, uh, because we had built the team there in Louisville. I mean, we grew it from, I think it had maybe five, six people when I had first started to over 25 people there when we had left. So we literally, I'm part of building this entire business from the ground up. And um, it was sad to get ready to tell those people, okay, I'm getting ready to leave. And there was a lot of tears that had taken place. But when I had told my mentor, he had gave me what I always thought I wanted. Because there's a place in God where God, the enemy will also tempt you with something that you desire. You might think it was something God desired, but it was really something that you desire. So it goes back to what you're saying earlier. So he made me a seven-figure offer to stay with him. And uh, I don't know about you guys, that's a lot of money to me. (laughs) So it's like, okay, Lord, this is what I always wanted. And God said, no, I have more for you. And so I thanked him, and I said, no, I got to go to San Antonio, Texas. So wait a minute. A seven-figure offer, and you said no. Do you see how important it is? Listen, when, when, when God gives you a dream, and you embrace the dream, and you imagine the dream, and you meditate the dream, it gets inside of you to the degree that it becomes your greatest reality. And anything opposite of that dream or other than that dream doesn't even matter anymore. So even seven figures, when you meditate what God gives you and when you embrace that, even the seven-figure offer will not move you off of what God says he's got for you. Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's important because the reason that's important is because God's preparing him to exceed the seven-figure offer that the man gave to him. He's going to blow the cap off of that seven-figure offer. Mm that the man offered to him. Had he received the offer, that would have been his cap. Mm. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You said something earlier about something we referred to yesterday. What was that? It's not in man. It's okay. It's okay. You got that scripture? Uh, yes. Jeremiah 10, uh, 23. 10 and 23. I think everybody needs to, to see this and understand this principle because it's very valuable for your life. It's Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. And you're going to read it in the Amplified? Yes. I like the classic. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's, it's called the AMPC. It is the Amplified Classic Translation. And go ahead. It says, O Lord, I know that the path of life of a man is not in himself. It is not within the limited ability of man, even one at his best, to choose and direct his own steps. Hmm. So we, we really have no business trying to direct our own way. Mm-mm. Because according to the Bible, that wisdom is not even in us without God. Mm. It's amazing because we can have some really good ideas about what we think our life ought to look like. We can have some great ideas about what we think we want, but God's saying, apart from me, your creator, it's not even in you to know who you are or what you desire. Mm. 
Isn't that powerful? And it, it brings us back to the place to where we, if we really want to live the best life that God has for us, we want to consult with our Creator. We want, we want to consult with our God. We want to consult with the Father mm -hmm. to give us guidance to the path. So we, we know, how many of you know Jeremiah 29, 11? Okay, so most people here know that scripture. And, it, and when I said some of you, others of you will know it too. You just didn't know where it was. He says, the plans mm. that I have for you. Mm. What does he say? He said, I know the thoughts. I, I think know of you. the thoughts and the plans that I have for mm. you. And there are thoughts of peace. There are thoughts of good. And they're designed to bring you to your expected end. Mm. Mm. He says, I know. One translation says, I know what I'm doing. That's God talking to you. <laughs> He says, I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get you to the path that I've created for you because it's not in you to know. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not in you to have the determination of the way that you should go. Even a strong man at his best, at his best. cannot direct his own steps. Mm. That's powerful. That word, because it's a dying to ourself. No matter where you are at in life, it is a dying to ourself. And so for me to be able to reject that, I have to know that I want that, but God has something more for me. Because in my mind, this is enough. We're good, Lord. We can go. We can build, get some property. But no, God's like, no, that's not it. And um, when I had to tell the people that I was leaving, they weren't surprised. They said, we always thought Louisville was too small of a market for you. Wow. And I was just blown away because I'm thinking, this is, this is it. But it's not in man to order his own steps. So when, you, when God gives you a dream and he puts that dream on the inside of you and you begin meditating it, processing it, without you knowing it, you start reflecting it. You start reflecting it in the way you talk. You start reflecting it in the way you uh, conduct yourself and relate to other people to the degree that they see it more than you see it because they told you, we always thought Kentucky was too small for you because they're hearing his words, they're, they're, they're experiencing his spirit and they can see what God is doing on the inside of him while you're meditating what God is speaking to you. Mm. And um, we, ha we even had people there, they were, they were like, well, did God tell you to go? And I'm thinking, these people are telling me now, did God say? And I was like, yes, God said it. And then they said, I know you're in good hands then, because that faith we built in the, in the workplace. And so we ended up moving from Louisville to San Antonio to start with absolutely nothing. So from the ground up, um, we began to build. And Can we see a picture of the, uh, his, his office now? There's, well, show the first office first. Can you show the first office of, of his office in the barn? There he is. That's how we started, right in the barn. Yep. So I'm thinking I'm leaving a C-suite level executive office to go in this barn. I'm like, Lord, are you sure? I'm starting here. I might have missed God on this one. Looking at my wife, that was probably a big mistake I've made. And so we started in the barn, and we began to train right in that barn. And I began to think like, Lord, well, who are you sending to help? And God sent the help because God told me when I started, he said, what's going to be more valuable than money for you is people. He said, people are going to be more valuable than money. He said, it's going to be a great resource. He said, the money that you'll have, it won't be able to open the door for you that the people will be able to do. And so we began to build and God began to give me relationships and so the relationships he gave me, he gave me relationship with vendors. And see, God gave me a good name. So my name was already known in the security industry. So off of my name alone, I was able to go and dictate terms that I wanted. Terms were over and over again. We hear, well, we don't ever give anyone this terms because uh, just in our industry, you have to have that business account built up. And so they instantly just gave us the terms that we wanted. And so we were able to purchase equipment and purchase things and use the money from our vendors. And so the, when we have a new client, the client would pay us the down payment. And then we'd use that down payment money because I'm thinking, well, Lord, 
And the model I used before, the client didn't pay to the end. God said, forget everything that you learned there. I'm going to show you a new way. And so uh, even before that, one of the most important things that I did is I used to meet with the owner of the company, we meet twice a week, and I kind of would tell him everything that's going on in his business. And God had told me to use that same time I had used uh, with the owner of the company to use with him. So that same time, grab a book, grab my calendar, prepare my email, prepare myself, and he would give me instructions on exactly how he's going to build his business. Because I always say it's not my business. It's God's business. This has nothing to do with me. And so... As we begin to receive that instruction and meditate on his word, he gave me exact instructions on how to build this business from the ground up. And so we actually didn't start making any sales until July. God sent people from New Orleans. He sent people from Tennessee. He sent people from Delaware to come and help me start. Because I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I know how to sell. I know accounting. I know the numbers. I know I talk to people. I can do all that part. But one thing I don't know, Lord, I don't know how to install the equipment. <laughs> and so I was so really concerned about how we're going to install this equipment. That's not what I've ever done. I've never ran the wires. I don't know how to do that. No, God had people that were waiting to come and to help. He had people waiting. I was just blown away by it. But the, the thing is, they were waiting on you. And they were waiting on me. Because it's, it's like this. The dream again, God deposits in you and then... There are people waiting in line for you to act on that dream so then they can fulfill that phase of the life, their life that they're in, in, in gravitating towards you, mm -hmm. which helps you, but it also helps them yes. in fulfilling the place where they're at at this time. Yes. So there are people connected to the dream that God has put on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And people you don't know, people you haven't seen, you don't know their name, but they're waiting on you to do your part, just like you were waiting on somebody to do their part so you could arise. Now somebody's waiting on you to do your part so they can arise. Mm -hmm. I want them to see the new office building that you're located in now. You saw his office in the Bourne, and this building is where his office is located now. Come on, give the Lord praise for that. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. In other words, this man that follows the steps that God lays out for him will also run into delight. He'll delight in his way, in his doing, in his life, as he follows the plans and the paths of God. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I love that scripture. That is one of my favorite scriptures. You could have used any other scripture. <laughs> That's the scripture a lot of people use when they describe my life because I don't get to do what I want to do. It's not... I don't have that privilege in my life. I can only do the will that God has. The steps that I take, he's ordered them. And so I don't look. I'm at a place in my life. I don't even look at what I want to do. It's all about what God wants to do in my life. When I moved from California to Louisville, I didn't want to move to Louisville. I'd never been there. But it was what he wanted to do. So I said, okay, Lord, if you're going to do it, then I'll go. If you want to, me to go to San Antonio, I'll go. When we were there... Um, in San Antonio, there was, I've had two major, major companies try and get me to come and be a part of their team. And um, one of the people had told me, they said, you know, it's funny you chose San Antonio. We just paid, they paid a substantial amount of money to do market research. And they did all this research to find that San Antonio was the fastest growing market in the nation when it came to security. I didn't want to tell them that I was like, you know, God gave me that revelation for free. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not in us, right? Right. Our steps are ordered. They're ordered by God. That's so good. That's, That's true. Right. Uh, earlier, Shantez made a statement about a discussion we had yesterday uh, that when you're employed by somebody, if you're working for someone now, you want to work for that company, for that organization, the way 
that, in other words, you want to be your employer. You know, you, no, you want to be your employee. Don't see yourself on the job as a lifetime employee. See yourself as someone who is transitioning into the assignment, the gift, the dream that he's put on the inside of you. Now listen, I know you have ideas that God put in you. Some of you have acted on these ideas at a level of about 20%. Some of you have acted on these ideas at a level of about 50%. Some may be more, but not to completion. What we're telling you today is that in agreement with the, what the word says, that when God gives a gift, he gives it, and there's no, it's not, it's not revocable. It's, non, it's, it's, it's irrevocable. In other words, God will never take that gift back. That's in Romans uh, chapter 5, I believe. But anyway, you can look it up. Look up the word irrevocable. He'll never take the gift back. He'll never change his mind about the gift that he gave you. And he'll never change his mind about you in whom he deposited that gift. Now, we change our minds about ourselves all the time based on our life, based on our experience, and we disqualify ourselves based on things that we've done or things others have done to us. But God does not disqualify you ever from the gift that he puts inside of you. He gave you a gift. And he meant for that gift to transpire, to be released in your life, to be a blessing to those around you. And when you get to heaven, that's the first thing that he's going to ask you about. That's the accountability that you and I will face as believers. What did you do with the gift that I put on the inside of you? How many people are attached to that gift? Because God did not create you for recreational purposes. Mm. He created you and designed you on purpose with intent to release what he's put on the inside of you. So when you're working for someone, you can't just think that, okay, this is my job. I'm talking about a Christian, a believer. This is my job. I'm going to retire, I'm going to stay here all my life, blah, blah, blah. No, he's preparing you. Just like when I was employed at another church as a youth pastor, a worship leader, he was preparing me for this. I had this, this was nowhere in my mind. I didn't want to be a pastor. I grew up in a pastor's home. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to law school. I wanted to be an attorney. I wanted to go, I wanted to do to do journalism. I wanted to be a legal journalist. That's what I wanted to do. Have my own legal show on TV. That's what I wanted to do. And, I, and when I got ready to make decisions about law school, God says, now, I'm switching the script on you. You're going to build a case, wow. but you're going to build a case for me. Wow. Wow. You're going to be on TV, but you're going to be on TV, and you're going to be releasing the gospel, the good news of the gospel mm. over the airwaves. Mm. That's your assignment. Mm. So, but he had me and he made me mindful of the fact that you're here, you're employed, but you're in training. So you got to be the kind of employee for this company that you want to have in your company. Mm. So I had to become the seed for the harvest of employees that I wanted around me. Mm. So and that's what you did. Mm. And now look where you are. And God is manifesting in your life. Mm -hmm. Let's give God praise right there. Mm -hmm. Before we finish up today, Sean, I want you to speak to one more thing here. Because in today's culture, everybody want to be their own business. They, they, everybody want to own their own business and do their own thing. But without the process mm -hmm. of development. Can you talk to this audience today and those that are watching us remotely about the importance of the process to getting to where you're a business owner? Because in my view, if you're not a good employee, 
you don't make a good employer. Mm -mm. No, that's powerful. The process is extremely important. Throughout the years, you always hear people talk about the process. It's the process. It's the process. And you really have to learn to love the process. You have to learn to love it so much that when it is time for your manifestation, time for you to leave, you became so in love with it that you're like, no, I'm good at it. That's right. You become comfortable in it. That's right. But you can't cheat the process because the process is developing that integrity that you're going to need at the next level. Because anyone can get to the higher level, but how long are you going to be there? Are you going to rise and then fall really quickly? Or are you going to be able to stay there and maintain there? And so with me knowing that God wanted me to think ownership, I always worked and did the business as if it was my own. Every part and every aspect I did, it was as if it was our own. We ended up moving to a 10,000 square foot facility mm. and uh, we were looking for uh, different companies to lay the floor. I flew my father-in-law in to lay the floor myself. An employee doesn't do that. It's only someone who has a higher assignment that my boss couldn't give me that. There's no amount of money you can pay me to do that. Most people, they think, okay, it's eight to five and then I'm out. But I really believe you should be working harder on yourself than you do on your job. That's a good word. But you can't cheat the process. It's, this took years of me doing it, years of me working every aspect of the business. Because what I didn't know is I had to learn every aspect of the business because God was going to have me do the same business from the ground up. And one of the reasons why I didn't want to stay in Kentucky is I didn't want to build on another man's foundation. I didn't want someone to say, well, you took my employees and, and you only have what you have because of what, what you took from me. No, I remember when Abraham said, I refuse to take anything from you. I don't want anything from you. Because if God gave me the word, then he can do it. That's right. He can do it from the ground up. And it takes faith to build. So without that word, you have to build something you've not seen. I mean, you've seen it in the spiritual realm, but it's not seen in the natural realm. And so God told me, you're going to create an economy, mm -hmm. right? People are going to do business with you that they wouldn't have done business before. Wow. You're going to create jobs that were not there before. But it all started with that process. The process of, you know, working till midnight, getting up at 3 a.m. Not because someone told me to, because I had to fall in love with it. Because one day people are going to, were, or now, they're working for me till midnight. And I didn't ask for them to do it. They're driving. We started it, and so our business name is South Texas Security System. Um, and I said, Lord, you have me name that. Uh, but we've already grown. We're all over Texas in a year, in a year's time. We've done more in the first quarter than we did all of last year. In one quarter for this year. One quarter. We were, I mean, we were multiple six figures, and we started from July to December. Because God showed me, he placed it, it was, it was inside of me. And you got three more quarters to go this year. We got three more quarters. Going to blow it out the water. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. Sean, I want you to speak to people because what's the most valuable thing in your process is your relationship with God. And the benefit of that is supernatural guidance. Just an example. They did the research in San Antonio and paid millions of dollars for it. And God just downloaded it to you and it was for free. And you showed up and they're telling you what the research says. Oh, it's funny that you would show up in the San Antonio because we just did the research and it showed you. Well, that's why I'm here. Mm. Yes. You were already on the ground at the right time. That's a benefit, isn't it? Yes. Of, yes. of yielding to God in your life and letting him guide you and lead you. He can do that in your business. He can do that in your marriage. He can do that in your relationship with your children. He can do that in your career pursuits. He can do it across the board in your life. I think some people watching us need to surrender yes. to Christ. Can you speak to that? So recently I had an opportunity. And every opportunity, as I told you earlier, it's not always God. And so a company, they really, they called me. I didn't call them. They recruited me very hard. And um, I usually don't share numbers, but they wanted to offer me $300,000 a year to come and work for them. And um, I wanted it 
Because when you're building, and you're building from scratch, you're like, okay, well, this is going to take some pressure off of me. So I think. But the pressure, because the Bible says he'll take his yoke upon you, right? His yoke is easy. But it's still a burden, but his burden is light. So I could have took something that they wanted, and I would have placed my own burden on them. And then I would have been directing my own steps because it was something that I wanted. And so I prayed because I say this all the time. I don't get to do what I want to do. And I asked, Lord, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? Because, God, if you're not in this, I want you to shut this door immediately. Shut it so it can't open it. Because I don't have the strength in myself to make this decision. Right? There's things you want in life yeah. that you know that you want it, that you have to yield that to God. And many times we don't want to yield to God because we have our own desires. But our desires, our life, it's not our own. That's right. And so the same way I gave my life to, my life to God in my youth, I do it daily. It's a daily, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? And so God, he, within 24 hours, he closed the door because I didn't have the strength to do it on my own because there is a place in God that it's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's not about what you desire. It's about what he has for you. And so you can't, you can't cheat that. You can't cheat that process, but you got to yield to him. And at every level, because we go from faith to faith, the next level of faith, it still requires all of you. Yes. The same me that gave up, it's a constantly, okay, what are you going to give up now? And you can't cheat that. You have to yield to God for that. And the rewards for yielding to him that way just super exceeds whatever you gave up. What God is doing for our business. I would never sell it right now. But as I told you, we already have contracts that are worth seven figures. There's no point in what he has for you, what he has for us, for the dream that he placed inside of us to walk out his word. It's greater than anything we ever imagined. So we hear that scripture, right? He'll give you more than you can think. Yes. Right? More Abundantly more than you can even ask or think for. I never asked for this life. I never asked for security. I never asked for the house that we lived in. He gave it to me. And when he gives it to you, he's responsible for taking care of it. That's a good word. That's a good word. So today, if you're watching us remotely or if you're here in the house with us, we just want to remind you that God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. I know you do too, but he does. And your plan, your desires, what you want, you really don't know what you want until you sync with him. All of a sudden, your desires are expanded. Your dreams are expanded. Your thinking becomes expanded. You begin seeing things at a level that you could have never saw them prior to you surrendering to the Lord. So that's this. Listen, we don't come to Jesus so we don't go to hell. We come to Jesus so that we can live the life that God created for us to live right here on the earth. Heaven is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. But he's not trying to get you to live in hell here just so you can die whenever you, that happens to go to heaven. He wants heaven on earth, and he wants that to happen through you. He wants to put that through you. So that's why we encourage people to surrender to God. Just surrender to his way. Stop fighting. Some of you are fighting. Some of you, you already know what he wants. Some of you would dare not talk to him because you know what he'll say. But today is a great day to surrender. All the stuff going on in your life, all the choices you've made without him, all the decisions that have been decided without his input, he can bring correction to it all. And he can bring peace to it all in your mind and in your heart if you'll surrender. So every time we come together, we give you an opportunity here in the house and here mobily where you're watching us. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray out together, and you're going to pray with us if you're ready to surrender your life. So pray with me right now. Say, Dear Lord, I surrender. I give you my life. Live your life through me. 
that I may be the man or the woman that you've created me to be. Thank you for loving me as I release faith in your son, Jesus Christ. He is alive. He's alive in me. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us and you meant it, it's, it, it was that time for you, it was that point in your life where you know you needed this and you did it, then we want to help you by giving you more information that shows you how not to just make the decision today, but to grow in that decision. Because millions of people have prayed this prayer that we just prayed. But how many have followed through with living the life that goes with that decision? Because they don't know what to do. They don't know how to do that. They just go to church, maybe. They just mimic the behavior of what they think other Christians do, but they don't know how to connect with God personally for themselves to grow in that decision that they just made. Well, we want to help you do that. We have information. We have teachings that can further help you. Now, if you're watching us remotely, you need to text us on the number that is on the screen, 43311, uh, 337, area code 43311. Just text, say, I gave my life to Christ today. Send us your email address. We know exactly what to do after that. We're going to send you that information that we know is going to be a blessing to your life. If you're here in the house and that's you today, then all you got to do is come up here and see me and Sean after service. And we'll make sure you get the same information that they're getting, uh, those that are watching us remotely. We believe that God has a plan for your life. And just as he has directed Shantez in his life and got him to where he is at 31 years of age today, uh, not today, but right now, he can do the same for you. Amen. But it's a journey, isn't it? Mm. It's a journey that we walk through and we follow. We do our best to listen to God and, and do what he tells us to do. And he knows our heart and he guides us and he directs us. He protects us. He defends us. He preserves us because he's invested in us. Mm -hmm. And it's, he's more interested in the manifestation of the dream than we are. Because it's designed to serve others more than just ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we bring God's expression to people. And so we can all do that. Every single one of us can do that. Thank you for joining us today. Glad to be here. Can you, well, can you thank him for being with us? <laughs> We're blessed to have you here. We're blessed for the contribution that you've made today. We also want to thank our musical guests. They call themselves The Vision, and they're from a couple of local high schools right here in town. Let's welcome them. Thank you. God bless you, and on behalf of Dr. Debbie and myself, we want to say, keep walking by faith. Each Sunday morning is an encounter here at New Life Church International. In an effort to make the Word of God practical and applicable to everyday living, Drs. Norman and Debbie Thomas have implemented Sunday morning encounters. Dream Builders Encounters are opportunities that share real-life stories which builds faith to dream bigger. This experience includes a mix of video presentation, testimonies, and interviews with those who have stepped out on their dreams, turning them into realities, merging the teaching of the word with the process of manifesting one's dreams. Be sure to be in attendance. Our next Dream Builders Encounters is coming up soon. This year is the year of phenomenal progression. We believe that God is positioning us to do amazing things in our community and in our world. It is important that we receive revelation from the Holy Spirit as we chart our way forward. This year we are setting ourselves to seek the Lord so that we may know what He requires of us. Over the next several months, we will host seven prayer and fasting events here at New Life Church International the first of which will be from April 10th at 12 p.m. to April 17th at 12 p.m. You may visit our website for the details and focus on this first prayer and fasting event. 
When we come together this way, supernatural things can happen. Arise from depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. This Easter Sunday, you will be reminded how important it is to arise and shine in the midst of challenging times and hard circumstances. You were born to win, and with God, you cannot fail. Join us Easter Sunday at 9.30 a.m. as we observe communion and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're excited to introduce three new ways you can give to our church. The first is text giving. You can give now, at home, or whenever you want simply by texting the word GIVE to our church's giving number. Once you receive your text reply, follow the prompts in your one-time registration to complete your gift. The second way is online giving. You can do this by going to our church's giving page and following the prompts to give. Log in by using your mobile phone number and secure PIN or your email and password. Once you've accessed your giving account, you can give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift scheduled to go out on the date you choose. If you'd like to give to a specific area of our ministry, make sure to designate your gift using the Fund drop-down menu. The third way is giving through our app. Simply open our app and access the Give tab to complete your gift. If you don't have our app downloaded yet, just head over to the App Store and type in Church by Ministry One. Download the app and then search our church's name. If you have any questions about any of these ways to give to our church, feel free to ask one of our staff members for assistance. Thank you for your continued generosity to our church.